How did Correa look out there today? How do you think <laughs> he looked out there today? Uh, after the first three batters, not bad. I thought he he overthrew early, he settled down, got in a real good rhythm, routine, got the ball down, uh, used his cutter, uh, threw some good breaking balls. I thought he was very efficient through four. And the one thing you can't replicate is getting the pitcher on base and have to run bases and go out and pitch an inning. Um, as hard as our guys are working, our pitchers are working on their hitting and everything else and their conditioning, you know, that's going to pay us dividends down the road. It's happened to us a couple times this spring where guys have had to go out, run the bases, perform, and get back out there. Uh, but I thought he was able to, you know, to minimize the inning. Could have got away from it. Did not get away from. I think he closed in on 80 pitches, maybe 79. So I thought it was another step forward for him. A good outing. We saw Bowker offensively again. What is his true defensive position flexibility? Where are you comfortable putting him? Left, right, and first. No center field. You know, maybe in a pinch for okay. a game. But I, I think there's certain things that you know we just need to stay away from. And in a pinch, you could probably use him there. And, I don't want to say he can't play there, but it's it's not one of the top priorities we have. Maybe we'll get to a situation where we try and feed him some innings and somewhere over over the other side or something like that, but not right now. Does he have an approach that could fit well in a bench role when he doesn't get consistent at bats? Well, I think you know that's something you learn over time when you, when you're not getting those regular at bats. The one thing he's been able to do throughout his career is light up the fastball. And I think the thing he's learning, you know, that word gets around as well in the league, and then they start spinning you, throwing first pitch changeups. He got a first pitch changeup from Oswalt yesterday, uh, but I think he's learning. I think he's learning. He doesn't have to jump the fastball to drive a fastball, which is going to put him in better position to hit, breaking stuff, off-speed stuff. And I think the one thing that'll help any of our guys as they pinch hit. It's the one thing we're talking about here, from a pitch hitting standpoint, and I've learned this from Rusty Stop. I put the weight of the world on myself when I first started pinch hitting. Rusty pulled me aside one day. He says, you got this all wrong. He says, I don't know what your thing, but it looks like you feel like you have to win the game. He said, the only thing you can do is win the game. You can't lose the game. All the other hitters have had three or four shots at this guy. So it's a win-win situation. The only bad thing you're going to do is not get a hit or not, not get on base. I said, it's on everybody else. It's not on you. That really freed me up in my whole mentality as far as pinch hitting. It's a thing I've shared with these guys. But that, that could be a role that I think you know, there's a name in the past that I saw do that, Danny Heap with the Mets for a number of years, and there's a few other guys that we've talked about that uh, really became good at it. I mean, really, Greg Morton, I had a couple guys, Mark Sweeney in Colorado, that were really good at it. And I do think, uh, you know, one of the things you've got to be able to do is spark a fastball, and Johnny can do that. Yep. Have you made a decision on an opening day starter, and if not, has Korea taken a step in that direction? No, we haven't made a decision. We haven't made a decision. And, um, you know, we're getting closer. I think uh, we're going to watch Pauly pitch. Um, Pitch Monday, and and we'll go from there. It's one of those two guys, um, and we'll just to see. We've looked at a lot of different things. Uh, we've we've categorized all the numbers, you know, trajectory, ERAs, histories in ballparks, history and stuff. We have all the information we need. I just want to make sure that with us, it's not so much. It's our number one. It's the best way to set up our rotation as we move forward to get out of the blocks. So we're still considering some things. Over back and hit, obviously. What does it do for you guys defensively? Well, I mean, you guys have been watching the games. He makes everybody else in the infield better. Mm -hmm. uh, he can play off the line and still cover the bag, which is going to make Walker be able to move more to his, his arm side towards second base to cover more, more ground that way. Neil moves better, um, I think, that way. It just makes our defensive range better. Uh, it's going to play out. You've already seen that play out a number of times on balls in the dirt. He can lay out. He's a clean fielder. He, he's just—he's really glue over there for us, and for the pitchers as well. Um, and you know, he's going to be a bat that's going to play out in the middle of the lineup that I believe is going to do some good things. You're talking about the, the mentality of what it takes to succeed at pinch change. I've been thinking, what, what kind of mentality does it take to succeed in a, in a platoon situation uh, for those two guys involved? It has to be a lot of selflessness. It's, uh, well, it does. But the one thing you're not—you got to realize you're not—you're not the manager. You're mm -hmm. not the GM. And at this level, it beats the heck out of playing every day in AAA when you yeah. get to a certain age. Exactly. So I think it's all about your approach personally, the player's approach, his makeup to go. There's some challenges that come to it. But then realize, again, what you're being asked to do and not try and do anything more than that, not try and get outside that. You know, I knew as a bench player that I'd get a game here and there. It didn't matter if I went five for five. I wasn't going to knock out Strawberry in right field the day I picked him up there. If I went three for four, I was going to knock out Ray Knight at third base. You're there to provide a spark if you can, hold the position down, help the team win in some kind of fashion. Mm -hmm. 
and that's it. And then obviously, anytime you get a player when you can plug him in the lineup and he can have a good game, you might like to back it up with another game just so you can stretch out and bundle some of the bats for him to get him in a better place offensively. Hey, how what? much? Go ahead. Right. How much do you try to impart your experience, like you're talking about Rusty's club, you're talking about the your Mets experience? How much does is that weight does that carry? You think in this clubhouse when you can share it with your players? Hey, I've here's somebody's been there and done that. I, I don't know. You'd have to ask the players. I'm just trying to share life experiences, game experiences. There's no shortcuts in anything we, that we do, but there are some things I can tell them that I promise them won't work. I, I can guarantee them. You try and please everybody in this game, that's not going to work. You try and be the guy every day that you're out, that's not going to work. Um, so those conversations, I don't know where they go. I just know that I'm going to push. I'm going to push it forward. One of the things I've always asked of myself is whenever I'm done, wherever I go, I just leave the game in a better place where it was, you know, where, where I've been. And that's all I'm trying to do with these men in here, share some experiences, things I've learned from some people that proved to be invaluable for me in my playing career, in my coaching career, and even in my managing career. Alvarez has squared some balls up. He's also struck out a lot. What are you seeing good and bad from him at the plate? Um, right now, I think we're just trying to get him uh, – to get him to back the ball up a little bit further. The off-speed stuff is challenging him a little bit right now. Um, the fastballs, he's getting to a better position. It's just locking down that off-field gap, wearing the fastball out to the big part of the field, not trying to, again, jump a fastball and hit it hit it nine miles to right field. I'm not saying he is. He's worked very hard on his approach. And I think he's going to be one of the guys we'll run over tomorrow to get a whole bundle of bats over at Pirate City. Um, he's a big league hitter in progress. And I do know this, that once he gets in a groove, you know, the noise gets loud, and that's all he's working for right here. You'd like to see more contact. He might be a guy that that's one of the things he's got to continue to find a way to try and get a little bit better at. Um, a hundred strikeout thing that doesn't bother me if there's a lot of damage being done, you know, especially where they're hitting in the lineup. So he's working hard, and I think he's getting to where he needs to go. He's not there right now. How remarkable is it for a new Walker to have been drafted by a catcher all of a sudden, switch positions once, twice, and now at second base? I mean, well, it is remarkable. It's a testament to the kid's pers perseverance and his mental toughness and to do it at this level. I mean, the only other guy I've seen do it at this level in that kind of category was Biggio. You know, he came up as a catcher in the Astros. In the Astros organization, turned out to be a pretty good second baseman. I'm sure there's a few other guys if I gave it more thought. But the kid's got great makeup, he's got great intangibles, and he's very skilled on top of that. So. With it's good his, for him. With all his athleticism, would he be, he'd be the kind of guy that could play nine positions in one game like he's been done before? You know what? I think that's just way out of context of what we need to be talking about right now. I haven't given that much thought. Thanks, Clint. You're welcome.